Good morning, radiant and beautiful lights. When we die, our souls embark on a journey that includes a comprehensive life review, a process that spans approximately 21 Earth days. As we leave our physical bodies, we are naturally drawn toward a radiant light, the source of the reincarnation cycle. During this period, we reflect on our entire lifetime with the review offering insights into the karma we've accumulated. At the end of this phase, we face a pivotal choice. We can either re-enter the cycle of reincarnation or reconnect with the ultimate source of creation and consciousness. If we choose to reincarnate, we carefully select the path for our next life, forging soul agreements with those we will encounter, our parents, family, and friends. Contrary to some traditional religious beliefs about heaven and hell, karma alone directs our journey forward. Along the way, we are never alone, as spirit guides, also known as guardian angels, are always with us. Every action we take, whether positive or negative, is meticulously recorded in what quantum theorists and spiritual practitioners call the Akashic Records, a concept similar to the Christian Book of Life. Throughout our existence, we have at least four spirit guides offering their wisdom and support and they also welcome us when we pass on. This is why many people who have near-death experiences often describe seeing familiar, comforting faces upon their return. Once the spirit separates from the physical body, the silver cord is severed and one is drawn toward the radiant light, accompanied by a guardian angel or spirit guide. Often a friend or relative, this light serves as the energy source, leading to the life review and reincarnation cycles presided over by the Lords of Cycles. These beings, not judges, but reviewers, work under the Creator's laws and guidance. In this reality, Earth functions as a school where we acquire knowledge about emotions and limitations, serving as data collectors. Advancement requires learning from our mistakes and failure to do so. Results in forced reincarnation in similar or lower states. It is said by many ancient Taoists that when you die and see the bright light, most are drawn and head towards it. However, most do not look behind them. Behind them is the universe, and you can choose to go there instead of the light, and that will return you either back to your current life or back to the creator and source of the universe. Dolores Cannon, a renowned hypnotherapist specializing in past life regression, spent nearly half a century uncovering the intricacies of death and reincarnation through her clients' experiences. These clients, who are experienced and request to their lost memories of death rather than mere death, shared valuable insights into the afterlife and the ongoing cycle of reincarnation. The ultimate goal of reality is to manipulate energy, gain full awareness of Christ consciousness, and resolve all karmic debts. According to Canon's findings, there are three primary destinations in the afterlife, each determined by one's vibrational frequency. The lower astral realm is inhabited by souls deeply rooted in negativity, often unable to move beyond the third dimensional earthly life. This includes murderers, addicts, and those diagnosed with psychosis. 
Many, when they die, remain unaware of their death and seek to re-enter living bodies, unable to escape the destructive mindset in the lower astral realm. They seek the negative sensations they have in their life and are lost and stuck. Eventually, they become disinterested of not receiving the physical sensations and head back to the reincarnation cycles to pay their karmic debts and learn life once more. From the beginning to the middle, astral realm resembles the concept of heaven, described as a beautiful and vibrant place where one can shape their reality based on their desires. The surroundings are filled with various vivid colors, breathtaking landscapes, and the opportunity to reunite with loved ones. This realm is perfect and indescribable. However, some souls eventually seek more profound experiences and move on to an upper stage of reality. The souls that choose to move on progress to the upper stage of reality, connect to libraries of the Akashic Records within the Source. These libraries contain rooms where souls can observe and study various aspects of reality and the universe, informing their choices for future incarnations. An example would be like watching a film or series. It is entertaining, but it would be more entertaining to actually live and experience it. The next step involves interaction with the Elders of Cycles, a council that advises you on your lives in the universe, but does not dictate the paths you choose. After physical bodily death, a comprehensive life review occurs. Every action, word, and interaction is presented objectively from the perspective of those you affected. For instance, if you touch someone in a good way, you will experience what that person felt. And on the other hand, if you hurt someone, you will experience what they felt. This process aligns with the teachings of the Emerald Tablets by the Atlantean Priest King, who referenced insights on the Elders of Cycles, mentioning these beings are neither alive or dead. And our Life Review is responsible for overseeing the universe's cycles, emphasizing the everlasting nature of the universe's laws and consciousness under the Creator. Albert Einstein's principle of the conservation of energy aligns with the ideology of the spirit being separate from the body. His quote being, energy cannot be destroyed, it simply transfers. When a being passes away, the energy that animates them is no longer there and gone. However, the energy that animated them continues to exist as the spirit undergoes a transition. Our bodies are only vehicles and clothes we put on and take off. Alan Watts says in the speech, I wonder what you would do if you had the power to dream at night. Any dream you wanted to dream, and you would, of course, be able to alter your time, sense, and sleep, say 75 years of subjective time into eight hours of sleep. You would, I suppose, start out by fulfilling all your wishes. You could design for yourself what would be the most ecstatic life. Love affairs, banquets, dancing, girls, wonderful journeys, gardens, music beyond belief. And then, after a couple of months of this sort of thing, at 75 years a night, you'd be getting a little taste for something different. You would move over to an adventurous dimension. Well, there were certain dangers involved in the thrill of dealing with dangers, and you could rescue princesses from dragons and go on dangerous journeys, make wonderful explosions, and blow them up. Eventually, you'd get into contests with enemies, and after you've done that for some time, you'd think up a new wrinkle to forget that you were dreaming, to think it was all for real, and to be anxious about it. And then because it'd be so great when you woke up, then you'd say, like children who dare each other on things, how far out could you get? What could you take? What dimension of being lost or abandonment of your power? What dimension of that could you stand? You could ask yourself this because you know you would eventually wake up. Then you would get more and more adventurous and you would make further and further out gambles as to what you would dream. And finally, you would dream where you are now. You would dream the dream of living the life that you are actually living today, in this very moment. That would be within the infinite multiplicity of choices you would have of playing 
that you weren't God because the whole nature of the God, according to this idea, is to play that it's not. So in this idea that every living being is fundamentally a fractal piece of God, not God in a politically kingly sense, but God in the sense of being the self, the deep down basic, whatever there is, and you're all that, only you're pretending you're not. One day you're going to wake up and say, wow, that's me. What you are basically deep, deep down, far, far in it, is simply the fabric and structure of the simulation itself. The captivating concept within simulation theory revolves around the notion that particles possess the ability to transition in and out of existence. Traversing diverse dimensions. For example, James Gates, a theoretical physicist, discovered error-correcting code within the equations of string theory resembling computer code. This revelation has led some to consider the possibility that our universe is. Laws and constants are part of a program and reality similar to a computer. And all beings are codes connecting to the universe, which is a light computer source. This intriguing phenomenon extends even to our thoughts, nestled within the synapses of our brains, as illuminated by the principles of quantum mechanics. A striking illustration of this phenomenon is found in the genesis of quasi-crystals by quantum physicists. These multidimensional crystals, including a remarkable eight-dimensional quasi-crystal, cast their shadows downward into lower dimensions, ultimately congealing into a spherical form. This phenomenon bolsters the idea that our universe may merely be a projection originating from a higher dimension giving rise to the intriguing hypothesis that we inhabit a holographic universe. In summary, various sources and teachings from around the world converge on a fundamental truth we are all fractions of the Creator, split into a Google of beings in the universe. To experience this 3D simulation matrix, the truth is that we are all fractions of God and are part of one consciousness playing that we are not. We are multidimensional beings who live after the illusion of physical death and our actions in each lifetime are rewarded or penalized through the karmic cycle until we have learned all our lessons of this reality. Ultimately, returning to the source of reality from which we originate. May the eternal light illuminate you forever. See you on the next episode. As always, we love you deeply Wish you to have a more abundant and joyous life possible. Have a wonderful day. Do you?